What's going on out there? This is Rob again with another upload here, you know, for YouTube. Shout out to you. And for you that are listening to me on the Rob's Room podcast, let's talk about something. Are you sowing your money once you get it? Are you giving? Are you giving your money? Are you tithing your your 10%? Are you putting money in offering? Are you helping people in need with your money? This is something that I, I've learned over the years, right? If you keep your hand balled up, can't nothing get in, can't nothing get out. I sow. I, I pay my tithes, no problem. I don't think twice about it. Now, was I always like that? No, I wasn't always like that. But what I learned with that is at the time where I was thinking about, oh, man, I want to pay, pay this money out my paycheck. Um, I'm going to need that for this or, you know, I'm going to need to pay this with it. That's because I was irresponsible with my money. So I felt desperate and I it caused me to not pay those tithes that I should have paid. And I noticed, let's say my tithes would have been $100, you know, give or take for that week now had i when i don't pay it it seemed like something happens that end up costing that amount of money anyway that was just my personal experience i'm like i need a battery for my truck it's right at a hundred dollars or 80 something dollars by the time you add taxes is a hundred dollars you know stuff like that and i wasn't a given person because I was so concerned about trying to survive to the next paycheck. The reason I was in that predicament was because I didn't give. I didn't sow like I should. And I believe that's the reason because I wasn't trusted with little I had. So I couldn't have much. See, being in debt will cause you to second guess paying your offering and tithes it will cause you to second guess giving to people because you are in survival mode see your mind is so wrapped around i'm trying to make it through the week i'm gonna hold my money as tight as i can be stingy with my money because i didn't do right with the finances see that that's that's where that comes from so you have people that are stingy and you know those people that have money, they don't talk stingy, they don't act stingy, they're more giving. It just works that way. It seems like people that are giving, money finds them, money run them down. That's the mode that I'm in. I'm trying to increase mentally. I'm trying to work to get there. I hope you guys are doing the same thing to the point where money is not an option it's just there so you got to speak it you got to believe it you have to pay your tithes you have to sow give and it be given to you right you don't need to be tight-fisted with your money i'm to the point now where if i have a dollar left and somebody need a dollar here here you go because i noticed when i started being like that I know it's a, a, a shift that happened. It seemed like when I sow and pay tithes and don't second guess it or, n or none of that, make it priority off top. This money's going here. Go ahead and cash app it out to the church. Boom. There it is. As soon as I get paid. Or if I don't do it as soon as I get paid, I make sure I do it sun that Sunday. Now, when I've been doing that, I've noticed... I don't have problems with money. Money shows up. Money runs me down. Money follows me. People give me money all the time. Here, here you go. I'm like, cool. Well, you know, because <laughs> money finds me. If you don't hold on to your money and hoard money, you can help a whole lot of people. And let me tell you something. For you out there that don't want to sow or pay tithes 
you're robbing you robbing God for once and you're robbing the people. What you what do you mean by robbing the people? Well, your ties is going towards let's say the lights, the AC or heat in the church. It go towards that water bill. It go towards a whole lot of things that the church need. It go towards the building fund. It go towards um, the youth ministry. It go towards sending your leaders to different locations um, for them to either rest or for them to go um, deliver the word, whether it's in state, out of state, in country or out of country. So you're robbing all of this. So you become a robber. That's something that no one should want to be labeled as. And, you know, people not going to come out and label you as that, but that's what it really is. Whether you agree or disagree, that's the facts. Don't be tight fisted with your money. You wonder why you have money problems? That could be why. It's the way you think about money. Are you tight fisted with money because it's because you love money? You don't you're supposed to love money. You're supposed to use it as a tool. So when you're tight fisted like that and showing that you love money, they said the love of money is the root of all evil. So being stingy is evil. It's not nice to be stingy. It's not good to be stingy. People always need something. We're not put here for just us and our people, our family. It's about people. So when you hold back on giving to someone, you are denying people. In a sense, you're denying people a whole lot of things you don't even know about. You haven't even thought about. If I get asked like, hey, somebody asked me like, hey, uh, I need five dollars now. Be wise with it now. With who you give money to. I'm not saying just give money to anybody. But you should have a discernment to know where your money's going and if it's going to the right places. Don't be tight fisted with your money. Like I said before, if your fist is bought up, can't nothing go out and can't nothing come in. You have to show and prove that you can be trusted with much. It depends on what you do with the little that you have. You wonder why your money is not growing? That could be why. This is not an upload to talk trash to anyone, to not down anyone, but it's to raise awareness. It's to make you think. Think on things to where, why your money is the way it is now. Why well, it seem like the old saying that they say, every time I make a step forward, I have to take two steps back. I heard it saying so much. Not in my own home, but in the black community, that's a that's a saying that we all know. We know the meaning of that. And that could come from decisions of with money. Are you good stewards over your money? You won't be saying statements like that or feeling statements like that if you're a good steward with your money because money will come back to you. It might not come tomorrow, but once you open that doorway of giving, look out because it's coming. That money's coming to you. Opportunities. You know, people always think it come back money. It could be opportunities to make more money. It could be jobs. It could be anything. People give you stuff. You open a doorway. You open a portal once you stop being stingy. That's my challenge. You know, shout out to my givers out there, sowers. Um, shout out to y'all that, uh, you know, you know what to do. Y'all pay your tires with no problem, no issues. You don't worry about your bill money. Um, being less because your tires, you know, you're not living in fear like that. So, but you are paying out that money. Money answer things. Money keeps things going. It takes money to survive. It takes money to 
to have things. It takes money to do a whole lot. And we rob we rob God, we rob people, we rob people of potential opportunities because you don't want to give. Let's just say that you with a church and they have a scholarship program for they, they pick one student, whether the students in that church or a community, and they have a scholarship, but they need money to be able to provide a scholarship to pay that tuition for that child that they choose. Everybody seem to be giving, but you don't want to give. And usually it's the same person or people that don't want to give when things come up. And would you rob that opportunity from that child? They might not know it that you didn't give. That's 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 up to you to each his own. But when you give and be willing to give, you have less to worry about. Cause that could be a, a thing too. The extra stress and worry is because you know you didn't do right with your money. That's why you have these debt collectors calling you. You have things going to collection because you're not doing the responsible and being trustworthy with your monies. That's about all I have with this. You know, let me know what y'all think. Um, yeah, don't be don't be tight tight wide tight fisted with your money. You know, you can't take it with you when you leave here. And you act like you can't go make more money. You act like money won't come back to you. So, let me know what y'all think. I really enjoyed it, you know, money talks. Um it's a series I'm doing. Um, yeah, I want to see y'all people win out there because the more of us winning, it was spread. It become mainstream. Let's stop making being broke mainstream. Let's stop making that, uh, a status symbol or crutch, you know, the whole, I had to struggle. Let's change that narrative. All right, guys. Peace.